What up you guys? I hope you're doing well. We're here for our weekly anchor message where we uh, get our spiritual lessons for the week. And we are using the Wild Unknown Archetypes deck, clarified with the Mystical Moments Tarot. So from Wild Unknown Archetypes, we've got the Vessel, followed by the Mask, Followed by the heart. And then underneath the vessel, we've got Knight of Wands. Underneath the mask, we've got Seven of Pentacles. And underneath the heart, we've got nine of pentacles. Eee, lots of pentacles. Lovely. So the vessel, the vessel. We use the term vessel on this channel quite a bit. And when we use the word vessel on this channel, we're usually using it metaphorically to refer to a vehicle for something. The vehicle through which we receive fulfillment in some way. The vessel is something that we talk about, like we have to prepare the vessel um, and we have to create the vessel. We have to build the vessel. We have to sustain the vessel. So what is the vessel? Well, everything in the universe is divided into either the light or the vessel. The light being the light of the creator, the all of oneness of God, right? The vessel being everything else in existence. And so in the beginning, before there was existence, there was only the creator in a sort of a void or a vacuum of just the creator's essence and beingness. And then that crystallized into consciousness. And that consciousness wanted company. It wanted to share. It, it was overflowing with itself and it wanted to give of itself. So light created vessel in order to pour the light self into a container. So we prepare the vessel to receive the light. Now the light, when we receive the light, that's like our blessings, favor, protection, guidance, um, a sense of fulfillment and security and love from God, from source. Um, and so in order to prepare the vessel to connect with those blessings, we have to build affinity with the light of the creator. We have to make ourselves more like God or more like Christ, right? So we have the same vibrational frequency as the unconditional love that is God, or we get closer and closer to it. That way we can have affinity with the light and light and vessel can come together in uh, vibrational attraction. So when we're preparing the vessel, it can also be like, when you work on a goal or a dream for a long time and let's say let's let's use medical school this is a really easy example to use so if somebody wants the fulfillment of becoming a doctor they have to build the vessel to become the doctor first they have the idea the the calling strikes them and it lights up something in their heart and it creates a a desire right and at first it might be a passive desire like oh that might be a good a good thing to do oh you know that 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 actually does sound like a good dream i think it's worthwhile i think it's worth pursuing so the passive desire is like oh you know you're kind of thinking about it but you're not really going for it yet and then that, that kind of takes root and it becomes an active desire. And so when we get that active desire, it's like we have this inspiration and motivation to give all of ourself to something and put in all of our effort and, and really give it all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And that desire propels the manifestation. It propels all of our energy to do the thing. And it actually creates magnetism that draws the thing 
towards you as well. So the vessel, as you're building the vessel to receive your, uh, your doctor's degree, you are working hard, right? You're studying. You are not just, you know, memorizing the information, but you need to comprehend it. You need to know it inside and out, right? So you study and you study and, and you study and you do your residency and you do clinicals and you do, um, you know, all the amount of schooling before you even get to medical school. And then you have to get your master's degree and then you go to medical school and then you have your residency after that. So it's like years and years and years of, a lot of effort and serious uh, commitment and devotion, right? And so once you get your medical degree and you have your um, internship and your residency at a hospital, and then you finally get to be a, a doctor, but that's because you prepared the vessel. And if you didn't prepare the vessel, you would be thrown into a situation and you wouldn't know how to handle it, right? You wouldn't be a good doctor. You wouldn't be prepared. You wouldn't be able to handle the pressure. You wouldn't be able to handle the long hours at work because you wouldn't have the appreciation and the respect um, and the reverence for the career, the job, and all the effort that you put into it. If you want to get into a certain um, like physical physique um, fitness level, right? Building the vessel would be you know, um, seeking out the sort of uh, fitness plan that would create the results that you want and then seeking out like a nutrition plan that would that would support that. But you have to have the discipline to stick with it, right? And to sustain the vessel, it's, it's like once the honeymoon phase is worn off and the initial inspiration is gone, you have to maintain that passion and that grit and that connection to your deeper why you're doing it to maintain that um that effort to sustain the vessel right so once you get into get into the shape you gotta you gotta keep exercising you gotta keep your diet right or it'll go away in a week right um same for like the medical field right you gotta keep um going back and study and going to workshops and and seminars and continuing your education uh, in, a, in a relationship if you want to build the vessel to have a relationship what that looks like is you prepare yourself you know you 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 get into a healthy place where you feel and look your best. You get your life, you know, in a certain uh, working order that can sustain, um, you know, sharing it with another person. Um, you would, you know, if hopefully learn how to have healthy um, relationships and healthy communication habits and skills. And so you learn how to have good relationships. And you also do the inner work to heal your own insecurities and, and wounds that might cause you to have projections on your partner that aren't fair, right? So you prepare the vessel to have this uh, relationship. Once you get into the relationship, the vessel, to maintain the vessel, it's like you've got to put effort into the relationship and you've got to make an effort for your partner, right? So it's a sustained thing. So the vessel coming up at the beginning of this reading to me, the, the reading feels like the universe is saying like, okay, you've been working on the vessel and you've been preparing the vessel to receive this light. And things are about to, like your efforts are about to show some fruit. Like it's, you've, you've hit a tipping point where you've been pushing the wheel, you've been pushing that stone up the hill and now you're finally getting to the tipping point where you're getting, getting to the other side of it. So, the vessel paired with Knight of Wands, there's like a twofold meaning to this to me. For one, it is like saying, don't get distracted, don't get shiny object syndrome. The Knight of Wands is like very gung ho, very passionate, but also kind of a fleeting, like not super committed, um, doesn't have the maturity of the Queen and the King to stick with it, right? So they can have a little bit of shiny object syndrome and get distracted. Uh, in dating, this could be like a player energy who's not ready for a commitment and they just want to have fun. So they're oats. So there's something about this that's like in order to, to maintain the vessel and to really like turn the corner and get close that much closer to your manifestation. It's like you need to hone in that energy. There's so much like raw potential and energy up in the air from that eclipse portal through Aries. Aries is the spark that begins the whole 
um, astrological will. And so it's inspiration, it's new beginning, it's that, it's that starter energy, right? But if we don't direct it into something, it can become spread out and diffused and chaotic. And if we don't channel it in with discipline into action and into focus, then that potential just sort of keeps continuing to build up and that creates excess potential that's not used. And then that leads to chaos because it's just all this energy that like has no form and no direction. So, um, and another thing about the vessel with the Nine of Wands is that the other side of this is that we need to get so charged up about what we're doing and why and our greater, you know, deeper reasons for not only our own life, but like how we're sharing it, this gift into the world and how it's going to affect not only us, but others. Like we need to get really connected with that so that we are passionate and enthusiastic and determined and we can keep that momentum and that willpower going. This is fire. Uh, this is enthusiasm. This is passion. So we want to keep and maintain and we have to keep that desire in our heart alight in order to maintain that vessel. So whatever you can do to keep that desire stoked. And part of it too is just circling back, you know, when you get tired or when you get into like sort of like a hypnotic state of just like going through the motions like reconnect to the core desired feelings that you're hoping to generate on a daily basis through this calling or this goal or this desire that you have. You know, connect with that deeper why that you're doing it. What is it going to offer you? What is it going to bring to your life? How is it going to expand your life? What are the real reasons behind it that give you a deep sense of purpose and that can keep you keep continuing to, to give effort to something when you are, you know, not as excited anymore, or when the the reward seems so far off that you're just like, I just so oh, I can't do it anymore. It gives you that strength to keep going, to delay instant gratification for the return and promise of long term fulfillment. And in the meantime, while we are building the vessel and sustaining that vessel, it's like we are given this. Uh, sort of nudge to embody the higher self version of ourself by using our imagination and pretending and make believing that we're already there, right? Like we're going to put on our higher self costume and live in that moment as if it were already a done deal. The seven of pentacles is seeds well planted and just having patience. Like the fruition is coming and it's going to be fruitful, right? It usually has coins growing on trees, like money growing on trees, right? But you have to wait for the proper moment of harvest or else if you pick your fruit too soon, it'll be bitter. And if you, you know, if you pick it way too soon, it's not even going to be there, right? So just having patience and knowing and then like, you know, the feeling like, we you know, when we talk about like visualizing the thing and feeling as though it's already a done deal. And a lot of times we focus on the excitement and uh, the anticipation of that, having that uh, already come to fruition. But a reader, one of my um, favorite readers that I watch pointed out something that was like really profound and helpful. He was like, don't focus so much on the feeling of being like overly keen or like super excited. You almost want to, it's like almost too pedestrian, right? You're like, oh, it makes you feel like a tourist in your own life, in your own reality. You're so surprised, you're in such awe, when really it should be commonplace. So when you are imagining yourself um, within that life already coming to fruition, it's like your second nature. You don't even think twice about it. You're just like, yeah, this is home. This is me. This is normal. This is the, the usual, you know, almost like to the degree that you're taking it for granted. Like be appreciative and, and grateful and thankful in your feelings, but also like be almost used to it in your, like when you're connecting with that feeling. And so the mask in this situation is not necessarily donning a false self or like a facade, but it's more like 
So Beyonce, when she goes on stage, she's a shy, humble person. So in order to embody the Beyonce that we all know of as a goddess amongst women, she takes on an alter ego named Sasha Fierce. <laughs> She's not even Beyonce. Beyonce is not even Beyonce. Beyonce Knowles is Beyonce Knowles, but Beyonce that we see, Beyonce is Sasha Fierce. So it's like putting on this mask of this version of you that you can try on um, for fun. Like you can be lighthearted about it and make it, give it a sense of play and a sense of fun. So when you're going into this new next level and you're meeting, you know, next level, next devil, essentially, because your opponent always up levels with you. So as you're meeting these new challenges, just sort of like have fun with pretending like, oh, I'm already my higher self. I already know how to handle this. Like, shoot, this life, I'm easy. I'm used to it. Like, I'm used to doing this. Like, I'm totally like equipped. I'm, I'm totally adequate for this challenge. Like done it a million times. I can I can handle this. So it, you know, you, it gets you that sense of confidence that sometimes you have to fake it until you make it. And that means kind of practice it until you really embody it fully. And that's what the universe has been telling us over the past few weeks. It's like, you know, you are stepping into this new timeline. You're new at this level, but your higher self is already a pro. And so if we can start to embody that higher self version of you that is already has the habits that they need to maintain in order to make that reality a real reality for you now. They've already done the work. They've already prepared the timeline for you. And it's about us meet, like jumping timelines until we run into that exact timeline. And the way that we do that is through facing fears. Um, like laying down our soul, sacrificing, becoming less selfish. Every time we really transmute our own negativity and darkness, like it changes things in the plot for us. And that night, it's like our soul goes up to its miniature judgment day and we meet with the council and they're like, hey, how, how'd you do today? Like, did you elevate? Did you, did you transmute anything? Did you get rid of any of your anger? Like, were you able to forgive and like maybe like find some compassion? <laughs> were you more patient than usual? Did you, do any, did you improve today? And if you did, then it's like the next day is written according to the merits and the, and the, and the work of that day before. Um, if you, you know, didn't transmute anything and you even like did some evil tongue and you were, you were a crab and you were a salt, uh, you might have a little bit of chaos, you know, coming up tomorrow. But at night, that's when the script gets written for the next day. And when we transmute our darkness, we rise above our fate and that helps us claim our destiny. A little piece at a time, we get like on a higher timeline, like, oh, you get a better script written for tomorrow. Oh, you did more work today, great, better script tomorrow. You know, but everything's sort of all up in the air, right? On a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, so the mask is, yes, pretending um, to take on larger than life um, aspects of yourself, maybe taking on already elevated and mature aspects of yourself, using your imagination and your, and your creative envisioning. Uh, and then just sit tight and be patient and continue to do what you've been doing because it, like the, the, the seeds are well planted. A, a fruitful harvest is on its way uh, because we've got the heart and we've got the uh, nine of pentacles. The nine of pentacles is a confident, self-assured business person. They are, you know, interdependent. They are gaining their own independence. And this is usually depicting a single person who's still looking for the fulfillment of family and love and companionship. But as far as their relationship with source, and their relationship with their life and their ability to sort of maintain their affairs is like they've got it on fleek. So they're set up for that next phase. They're set up right now in the perfect position to meet someone where they can both be equally yoked individuals who are fulfilled and have a certain level of independence on their own. But when they come together can become more for having it. So in regards to like our dreams and our goals, I feel like we're really getting there. We're really establishing like 
our consciousness and our confidence and our skills and we're coming into our own. And you know, if there is any hiccups or worry or like tiredness or you're losing steam, just reconnect with that heart-centered vision, that lo the love in your heart that you're generating to have more like a, a life that you're in love with, uh, you know, surroundings that you love. And like, what is your, like, what's your driving motive for this goal, for this dream? You know, what, what is your heart-centered reasoning behind it? And connect with that because it's, it's the heart that propels the, the manifestation, it's the, the heart that gives it the magnetism and the energy and the fire to keep going, right? So the, the heart is where the desire is. And the desire is what makes the manifestation happen. Nothing happens without desire. There's nothing to move to move the energy. So things are shaping up. We're really coming into our own. I think that there's going to be... Um, a new level of security and abundance and fulfillment and independence coming and freedom. Uh, and it's we're, it's just stay centered in the heart. Stay tuned in. Um, you know, set your focus and your meditation there. Feel the feelings. Feel your heart and, and fill the heart with love and make choices from the heart. We want our cup runneth over, right? We want to feel um, full and whole and, and the fulfillment that we seek. And the more that we fill it in the now, the more of that we will have in the now. But if we feel like it's outside of us and that we don't have it, the less we will have that fulfillment in the now. All right, you guys. So we're building the vessel. We're creating the vessel um, and we're sustaining it with um, our passion and enthusiasm and grit and determination and focus, focused, disciplined intention, taking uh, divinely inspired actions to do things, not just living up in your imagination, but putting it, putting it to work. We are also using our creative imaginations to take on and put on the yolk of the higher self the fully realized self that's already in the dream, that's not even excited about the dream anymore. It's just commonplace. It's just the norm every day, right? Put on our Sasha Fierce mask and have confidence and patience that everything's coming together and trust the creator and enjoy the growing sense of fulfillment, maybe even enjoying some of the fruits of your labors and keeping that relationship to source very strong, very open, very active, and keeping anchored in the reason why you're doing this and what's going to drive you to keep making an effort and keep showing up and keep your desire alive is those, those heart-centered reasons of not just receiving all of this for the sake of the self alone, but receiving it for the sake of sharing, for making life better for those around you, for the world at large. You know, you're, we want to leave the world better than we found it. And through our blessing and growth and healing, that's how we also help others to be blessed and grow and heal as well. All right, you guys, I am excited about this week to come. Let me know in the comments if anything is exciting that's going on, any good news. And I will see y'all tomorrow for our weekly manifestation oracle reading. Ciao.